Sup you beautiful people. Hope you've had a fantastic day. Welcome back to another new episode of What If Naruto Was Taken By Yoda And Trained To Become A Jedi Knight. If you guys enjoy this what if, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel after watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So now let's start this video. On board the fire's shadow, one day later. The outer rim was vast and most times an untamed territory of the galaxy, given the distance between it and the galactic core which made it a perfect place for a small fleet of Republic turncoats to rendezvous. One by one, Republic cruisers and various support ships exited out of hyperspace before being joined in by Star Destroyers, 12 in total. Some of them had been slightly damaged due to the recent engagement over Coruscant. All ships are reporting in. Ross stated as he observed the gathering fleet. Never in his wildest dreams did he think that he would have expatriated himself from the Republic the way he did. Of course, they would first have to find out if he was part of it. It would take them a while considering he never reported in his return from Iriadu. He still had a few cards to play in that field. That's a lot more than I thought there would be. Naruto muttered. When he was told that many had defected because of him, he didn't think it would be such a large force. You give yourself too little credit, Uzumaki. Ross checked the sensors one last time, seeing that a new ship had arrived from hyperspace. Its if was registered for diplomatic use. Follow me, we have someone that would very much like to see you, at least up close this time. Ross stated as he turned to leave the bridge. Naruto raised his eyebrow before he followed after him. And who is this person we are supposed to meet? Naruto questioned, not sure who Ross was talking about, but the ex-admiral pressed an index finger to his lips, choosing to remain silent. Walking through the hallways, Naruto could see clones busy about getting the wounded to the medbays, while others were donning EVA suits to begin emergency repairs to the more critically damaged portions of the superstructure. They all abandoned the Republic, for me. Naruto thought as he was left speechless during their journey into the bowels of his ship. He hadn't questioned their loyalty or their personal feelings on the matter, but he never thought that people would actually forgo their past lives in the Republic for his sake alone. We're here. Ross stated as they reached the ventral hangars. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he wondered what they were doing here, there was no one around. Before he could ask though, the shuttle entered the hangar bay and slowly landed before them. The ramp extended to the floor with a hydraulic hiss as guards slowly filed out. Naruto's eyes widened when he realized these weren't just any guards, but the panther and senatorial guard. Naruto's eyes widened at that. The guards quickly took up their positions before an elegantly garbed panther and strolled down the ramp. Her lavender-colored hair was done up in a tight bunch and held together by a golden headdress. It had been some time since their last meeting, but he recognized her amber-gold eyes and face pain very well. Chuchi. Naruto's mouth nearly hit the floor as the senator from Pantora smiled warmly and greeted him with a quick bow. It's good to see you again, General, though I wish they were under better circumstances. Chuchi stated formally as Naruto nodded. It had been years since the two had last properly met. He had heard she was elected as Pantora's senator a few years ago, and was pleasantly surprised to see her in passing in the Senate Rotunda, but they'd hardly gotten more accumulative minute to speak, and never alone. Ah, uh, yeah, same. But, ah, uh, what are you doing here? Naruto was incredulous. What would a Republic senator be doing here where tens of thousands of traitors to the government were amassing? Chuchi chuckled slightly at his question. What, am I not allowed to meet an old friend? She teased lightly, dropping her formality. Don't get me wrong, it's great to see you again, but... Naruto was still confused. Chuchi here was the financier for our latest operation. She paid for the bounty hunter's services, and bought all the equipment we used to free you. Ross explained. Seriously? You're the one behind all this. I can't believe you turned against the Republic. Naruto's confusion was now mixed with a slight anger. He didn't want anyone to throw away their lives for him, least of all someone with a promising career like Chuchi. The panther and senator sighed as she walked up to him. I'll admit, at first I was skeptical about subverting the justice system of the Republic on personal matters, but I quickly realized that your trial was the true subversion. Chuchi answered, but Naruto only furled his brow in a mix of confusion and embarrassment. I'm flattered that you think I'm worth that much, but how did you arrive from Naruto is innocent? I will defend him in the Senate to Naruto is innocent, let's hire his troops break him out of prison. Naruto asked, still somewhat bewildered. Because you're a hero, Naruto. The people adore you because you did not abandon them. You saved Pantora from a grave situation, one filled with greed and corruption. The Pantoran people were furious when they heard about your trial. It was only thanks to my staunch defense that rights were prevented. Chuchi elaborated as Naruto thought about what she had just said. Was he that popular on Pantora? It's not just Pantora, either. To the many that have experienced this war firsthand, you're one of the few that actually give a damn about the people that the Republic has allowed the exploitation of. You have saved their worlds, protected millions from being dragged into the war. Everywhere you went you have brought peace and stability. Compare that to other Republic forces that are tied down in a never-ending war on static fronts, you have pushed the Separatists back, and then some. Ross took this opportunity to explain his motives as well. 
It had taken a massive effort just to gain a few systems of ground during Full Hammer, and the Inner Rim worlds that it seceded surrendered only thanks to Naruto's efforts. Naruto had always been the one on the offensive in pushing the Separatists back. He had kept liberated systems from falling back into Separatists' hands, thanks to his consistent deployment of irregular units. Systems that, thanks to his imprisonment, had been deserted and quickly retaken by the Separatists or besieged once more, due to the Republic's inability to keep the momentum going in their favor. So with that, Admiral Darahan and I have come up with a plan. Chuchi spoke up once more as Naruto turned his attention to her. The plan? Naruto questioned. Just what had been going on while he was inside. Earning from the Republic will do you no good, and I'm sure you have no plans of siding with the Confederacy. So those here that have chosen your side will have to make a stand. Chuchi explained. It was true, if the Republic really wanted to they would find him. Even if he were to return home forever, the GD would sense his presence there eventually. I, I don't know. Naruto stated. As a child people despised him, derided him for being the container of the fox that had caused so much destruction to the village. But here in the galaxy, there was apparently a number of people he had never even met, that were willing to fight and die for him, all in order to keep him out of Republic custody. He was already against a lot of them leaving the Republic just to free him, he definitely wasn't willing to have people die just to keep him safe. I know it's difficult, but the choice is yours. People are willing to lay down their life for this cause, myself included. Chuchi proclaimed bravely. She might not be a fighter, but she would gladly fight for Naruto. Alright, now I'm not picking up what you're putting down. You said these people wanted to protect me, but you're saying it's for a cause now. Naruto was still unsure of what she was getting at. Chuchi smiled wistfully, thinking back to Naruto's proclamation yesterday. What you said in the Senate was true. Those that are corrupt are shamelessly so to unfathomable extents. It was their excessive taxation of trade routes just to lie in their own pockets that started this whole war. The separatist movement is not a rebellion without cause, but it is being misled by the machinations of Deku and others. The Republic and the Confederacy both need to be saved from themselves. We want you to enter this war on behalf of the people. You're the only person that can unite the galaxy. Chuchi had laid it all out for him to digest. What are you suggesting? Naruto asked warily, his face showing his slow realization. Unite the galaxy. That was a much larger cause than he had expected. What we're suggesting, Uzumaki, is an alliance of systems dedicated to preserving and reconstructing the old order from the ground up. Ross interjected. Naruto stared at the one-eyed admiral for a moment before returning his eyes to the young pantheon. And what kind of alliance would that be, Chuchi? Naruto continued his inquiry, but he was already beginning to understand. Chuchi smiled confidently and wholeheartedly. The alliance to restore order and democracy. GD Council Chambers, Coruscant. The GD Council had never been as busy as they were now. The Committee of Twelve found itself reduced to eleven as Obi-Wan had found himself busy on the front lines, and was unable to attend meetings. Thus, he was unaware of the events that had transpired on Coruscant anyways. Adigalia had thought it an urgent matter to notify Obi-Wan, among the rest of the GD scattered across the galaxy, of Naruto's remarkable escape, but the Council had chosen to let someone else deliver that news to him. Ever since Naruto's breakout and later his break-in of the GD temple, had raised the alarm and made the whole order question the security of the temple, as well as the led the Senate to grow concerned over the ability of the GD to protect the Republic. This was supposed to be the most guarded place in the galaxy. To have it breached by one former GD and a bunch of bounty hunters had shattered that illusion. Still, these political squabbles were the least of the Council's concerns right now. The most pressing issue was how they should proceed in dealing with Naruto. To say that the Council was divided on the matter would be putting it mildly. Masters Tyne, Koth and Rancisis, were calling for Naruto to be hunted down and brought to justice, while Kid Fisto and Plo Koon had both advocated to let him live out the rest of his life in peace. Shakti, to their surprise, had sided with Rancisis and Tyne, albeit for her own personal agenda of hiding Naruto away. Even Peel, Coyote Mundi, and Adi Gallia were more passively minded, suggesting that they adopt a policy to arrest Naruto should he be discovered, but not actively track him down. Mace Windu concurred with this opinion, but like with Shakti, it was for his own personal reasons. He wanted to drive away Naruto in order to drive out the corrupting force in the Senate. So far, only Master Yoda, always the pragmatist, had remained silent on the matter. I don't think it would be wise to let any others onto my plan. Not everyone can be trusted to share my conclusion. Windu thought as he glanced around the room, watching the council continue to bicker. It wasn't that he didn't trust those present in this room, it was just that walls had ears as well, and with the temple so easily breached, it was best to stay on the safe side. He looked at Shakti and nodded, having spoken with her before the meeting, in order to guarantee her silence on the issue. She knew of his plan and reluctantly agreed to it, in order to keep her own agenda hidden. Summoning the full attention of the council, he spoke. With Uzumaki at large and the Senate and the course questioning us relentlessly, we nevertheless need to denounce Uzumaki as a GD. Windu stated as everyone nodded. It was clear that Naruto could never rejoin the order at this point. 
Even though he had his supporters, it would be a political nightmare if they were to ever let him back into their ranks. I'm not sure that the Senate and the courts will be placated by that. They will question why you ordered us to withdraw our forces. Mundy questioned him. It was true. Windu had out of nowhere ordered a total withdrawal of GD forces from the Senate building. From the outside it looked like he was aiding the blonde. Naruto managed to strike down a dozen GD in his escape, and even defeated a platoon of Senate commandos in a tenth of an hour. It would have been foolish to send in more GD to send to their deaths when they could aid in the war effort. Our goal was for the two of us to catch up to him before he escaped, but those Mandalorian mercenaries proved far more capable than Master Windu, and I expected and he escaped before we could regroup. Let that be our response to these politically driven inquiries. We won't have public officials poking their noses in and interfering in strictly GD matters. Shakti laid out the perfect excuse. It was only half fabricated. Exactly the issue. If an entire commando unit couldn't stop him with the aid of GD, then what hopes would our knights have alone? The Senate is fully aware of Uzumaki's capabilities are combatant. It's why they're treating our small blunder so seriously. Let's not let their hypocrisy distract us from the real issue. Windu questioned and part of him believed that to be true. Naruto was powerful, very powerful. Windu knew that if he fought Naruto, he would win, but it would cost him severely in the process. He almost shuddered at the thought of how powerful the blonde would be in just a few years. It may be well and all that we have a response for the politicians, but we still need to act. Naruto is out there at large, and we need to bring him in spoke the hologram of Apor and Sisis on Salakami. This caused Windu to frown. For his plan to work the GD had to give up on wholeheartedly pursuing Naruto. It would cause him to go into hiding, and that is not what he wanted. He knew that Naruto would resurface, and when he did his enemies would go after him. We don't know where he is. He could be halfway across the galaxy by now. Plo Koon responded and Windu nodded, hiding his approval. It's true, for the time being Naruto could be anywhere. Mace knew Naruto better than most thought, however, and he had a feeling Naruto wasn't going to stay away from the galactic spotlight indefinitely. He would return a greater danger to the mastermind in the Senate. Know where he is going, I do. Yoda chimed in. Surprising the rest of the council. You do? Yoda's revelation piqued Shakti's interest greatly. If she could track him down on her own, she could give him a safe place to hide out. Halfway across the galaxy, he is. But in a direction that most are not familiar with. Yoda started causing Windu's eyes to slightly widen. The GD knowing Naruto's immediate location was not part of his plan. Well if you know, Master Yoda, then please tell us where. Ren Sisis questioned as Yoda opened his eyes. Without reason, did young Naruto not confront me? To acquire the Navdata of my ship was his purpose. I sense his mission was successful. Yoda hummed in thought. So where is he going? Rancisis pressed Yoda. Isolated in the unknown regions is his home. Difficult to navigate was the way there. Yoda gave his hypothesis. He could be wrong, but the chances were slim. If Naruto wanted to go anywhere else he would just use established hyperspace lanes. So he's heading home. Why do that now? Master Mundis asked. My guess is that it's probably the only place he would feel safe from a Republic pursuit. It's outside of Republic space and is cut off from the rest of galactic civilization. Adi Gallia suggested. So just exactly where, Master Yoda, is his homeworld? Sasizi Tainas, interested in hunting down Naruto and bringing him to justice. Yoda looked at the floor for a moment, meditating on the Force. The rest of the council were confused by his hesitation. After several seconds, he looked to his fellow masters with a concerned look on his face. Have a backup of the nav data, I do. The question is who to send after young Naruto, are we? Yoda asked the million credit question. The council members began shooting glances rapidly at one another, but no one said a word for over a minute until finally Plo Koon broke the tense silence. This could prove to be a most difficult selection process. The Keldor GD said what was on everyone's mind. Of the thousands of GD in the order, perhaps a hundred or so were at or near Naruto's level. Of that hundred, only about twenty stood out as Naruto's equal. His brief skirmish with Yoda had suggested it was likely that no one on the council was his obvious superior in combat. I think it would be wise for us to preemptively dismiss Masters T, Kun, and Fisto from consideration. Coyote Mundi announced. Shakti was about to raise an objection, but was quickly interrupted by Master Rancisis. I concur, and I would also add Master Gallia to that list. Naruto knows them and their abilities more than most. Not to mention anyone would find it difficult to face a former friend or Padawan. Windu and Yoda felt their fellow masters glance upon them. Both of them had lost someone to the dark side as a result of the Clone Wars. I would volunteer myself, but I'm preparing my forces to strike from either. And Salakami cannot be left unattended so that excludes Master Rancisis. Mundi went through the Masters present, but their choices were limited. I think it may be wise that we save this debate for a later time. Naruto doesn't pose a significant threat right now. Windu offered. Although a few of the Masters were eager to chase after Naruto, they reluctantly agreed. It would take him some time to safely navigate the unknown regions if he was truly headed that way. Bridge of the Fire's Shadow. 
During his time as a GD and Republic general, Naruto had wanted to end the war as quickly as possible to prevent the violence from spreading, but it was clear now that whoever was commanding Dooku to start the war was also the one fighting to keep it going on the Republic. Deep down he knew what had to be done. The Republic was infested with greed politicians that were sucking the mid and outer rim worlds dry. People were suffering and the Republic had become incapable of doing anything. It needed to be disposed of. The Senate needed far too many of its members purged for their avarice. Naruto had been looking at the galactic map for a few minutes in the bridge. Around the table he had gathered Ross, Fox, and Chuchi. Joining them was Toad, the current captain of the 497 Seconds 3rd Company, and Wiz, commander of the 68th Legion, and the inaugural captain of the 3rd Company. If they were hoping to build a state and able to exert military power on a galactic scale, they would need a high command and a political figure to form a government around. Naruto, by design, was to be named head of state and chief of operations for the army for this new nation. Although he had an average record in planning and strategy, he has a special aptitude for analysis and critical thinking skills that would serve well in both roles that role. Chuchi, in addition to being the representative of Pantora, would become the new head of government. As secretary general, she would lead what would eventually become a representative advisory body for systems that joined them in the future. She had been a lifelong politician and would serve well in that role until peace had been restored. After the war, she would give up her unitary power for free and fair elections, in what they hoped would become a new galactic republic. In addition to the political side of things, Naruto had established a small general staff that would hopefully expand with time. Ross's position was a no-brainer. Admiral of the Navy. Considering their manpower at the moment, it wasn't that much of a promotion. But he was commanding officer for their entire fleet, and responsible for its management in regards to all operations, strategy, and resources. Fox, as Naruto's most trusted commander, would become supreme commander of the army, as well as deputy chief of operations. His duty was to direct their generals, well, when they chose them, in the field as well, as being responsible for handling military intelligence. Meanwhile, Wiz would take the role as chief of strategic command, a role that included military logistics, long-term strategy, and even finance. Wiz had also named Toad as his deputy chief to share some of his responsibilities. If the plan is to usurp the Republic, then we'll need to gather more support from the galaxy, and send a clear message to the Republic and the Separatists. Chuchi opened their meeting with a somewhat obvious dilemma. They had a force of maybe 20,000, plus the Panther and Senatorial Guard that was loyal to Chuchi. We need to make a decisive move to show the people that we have not abandoned them. Wiz opened with his primary suggestion. If we do that, then plenty of systems will start to side with us. What about Dak? Fox suggested a potential first target. Naruto thought about it and at face value it made sense. The two leaders were on opposite sides of the conflict, and the planet was likely to become a hotbed for military activity in a short time. Mon Kala. I'm not so sure about that. For one, both the Korin and Mon Calamari have already chosen sides in this war, and I don't think that's likely to change. King Kalina is close friends with the Korin chieftain, and has managed to keep the peace despite their dispute. I think we'd be trying to capitalize on a situation that hasn't yet come. Wiz had more insight into political matters than most clones, and had intended to prepare the 10th army for the inevitable conflict on Mon Kala, but Yuz Kalina had managed to guide his people out of the crisis, and into a tentative peace, before any serious fighting broke out. You're also forgetting our complete lack of equipment. Aquatic environments are an impossibility at this time. We could send, at most, a single regiment. Not something that could make a difference. Ross added. Naruto and Fox conceded their points. Mon Kala wasn't a viable target, at least not at this time. I think I know the perfect location where a people's faith has been lost completely. Pressing a few buttons, Ross brought a hologram of a planet before them. Wiz and Chuchi hummed in agreement before Ross continued. Ryloth has been under occupation by the Separatists for a long time, with the Republic doing nothing to break the siege. There's already a resistance force on Ryloth, and they're not exactly fans of the Republic. It would be easy to convince their general to join up with us. Fox added. Ryloth was more or less abandoned by the Republic, thus the resentment. Not to mention that Ta was highly unpopular even before he left his people to suffer at the hands of the Separatist occupation. Chuchi was well aware of how disliked Ta was among the people of Ryloth, much of all he did was complain about it. Naruto had met Ta in passing a few times, and the man was a perfect example of the corruption and decadence that had taken root in the Senate. He grew fat off the work of his people while they starved and suffered from the forces of high taxes. And now, the Separatists. Not only that, but Ryloth was fairly anti-Republic before the war, due to the unfair taxation and trade restrictions on it by the Republic. They are only part of it because Ta dragged them into it. Wiz reminded. So you want us to lift the blockade and liberate Ryloth? Naruto questioned as Wiz and Ross nodded in agreement with one another. They are isolated from the rest of the Republic, and it's unlikely that aid will come, at least not for several months. If we can show the galaxy that we can defeat the Separatists, then we will get more support. Toad reaffirmed the legitimacy of the plan. 
Why would they appeal to the republic that they despise when they could appeal to an unbiased hero that has repeatedly demonstrated his concern for the people and is decisive in choosing to help them? Winning hearts and minds, eh? Fox questioned. It wasn't an old strategy. The clones would use it to increase republic support on planets that weren't quite fond of the republic, like Ryloth. Then Ryloth is our target. I will return to the Senate and do what I can to divert attention from there. Here, take this Naruto. This is a direct holocom to me if you need it. Know that you will always have a supporter in me. Chuchi stated as Naruto slowly nodded before he hugged her, causing her to blush at the close contact. Thank you, Chuchi, for everything. Naruto thanked her as thought about his next course of actions. It seems that his choices were limited. The Republic would want his hat and the Separatists as well, considering how many defeats he had handed to them. So we've chosen our target, what now? Ross questioned Naruto, who closed his eyes and took in a deep breath before he opened his eyes. We're not ready, not yet. I can't leave myself as I am. I think it's time I return home, at least for the time being. Naruto stated, raising the eyebrows of the others. The seal was failing, he could tell that it was. The letting his anger run free against Grievous, he had allowed Karama to slip more and more of his chakra in, which had completely thrown off his senses, and was affecting the potency of his force abilities. It was reason enough to return home just to fix this issue, but if he was going to take on the Republic and assist at the same time, he would need an edge that no one else could have. It was time to learn how to properly use chakra. Until this point, Naruto had only the most rudimentary principles to go on. Chakra made him faster, stronger, and more agile, but his inexperience meant that its effects were minuscule when compared to the enhancements that Force Valor offered. If he could use it properly, even just to the level of the Chunin that used to chase after him for his pranks, it just might put him on the level of someone like Master Yoda. How long were you thinking? Fox asked. Unfortunately, it's going to be as long as it takes. Hopefully, I'm not in for too long of a vacation. It might take longer than you think. I can see things most people can't, like Chakra, and I can tell that yours is pretty messed up. Sasuke said. Is that why you're going back home? To help fix this chakra problem? Ross inquired. In short, yeah. And if I can learn how to use it properly, I should become a lot stronger too. Naruto clenched his fist, remembering his hard-fought stalemate with Yoda. He would need to be able to match Yoda with a lot less effort if he had any hope of starting his own galactic civilization. Stronger than you already are. That's no fair. I can barely keep up with you as is. King joked as he entered the bridge. Naruto chuckled briefly before turning to Ross and Wiz, the two biggest brains in the room. How long do you think the Ryloth resistance can maintain its current level of operational integrity? Naruto asked the two of them, and Wiz spoke first. Considering our time frame, I would say maybe three months. Any longer and their grim situation might turn desperate. They might have to appeal to the Republic at that point. Wiz estimated, but Ross shook his head. No, not even that long. Ten weeks, maximum. Republic High Command was gearing up for a massive campaign towards Ryloth that was to immediately follow your execution. With Chuchi stalling in the Senate and Confederate opportunists taking advantage of the chaotic situation in the mid-rim, it may have bought us a few weeks of time, but eventually the Republic will be the ones liberating the planet. So giving about a week for travel time, that gives me 60 days. Naruto surmised. Ross, Fox, Wiz, I need you to start drafting up invasion plans. As soon as I get back, we launch the operation. Naruto stated as Ross nodded before turning on his heel and heading to the command deck, leaving Naruto to his own devices. Turning around, Naruto looked at Sasuke who was lazing around in the corner, definitely listening in. Sasuke, I need you to come with me back home. Naruto requested, but Sasuke snorted in response. No way, dead lass. You have an Avdata and a whole fleet at your disposal. Do it yourself. Sasuke's reply elicited a frown from Naruto. The bounty hunter had no plans of going back. Not now, not ever. Only three horrible things could possibly await him there. Prison, death, or a pay cut. I doubt anyone there will recognize me or even believe me when I tell them who I am. I need you to back me up. They'll believe you. Naruto tried to reason with Sasuke, but the blonde didn't understand his position in the slightest. It's more likely that they won't, but I see your point. Having someone to introduce you would be better than nothing. Either way, that's not my problem, it's yours. I am not even going to consider returning to Konoha until I'm ready to die in 60 years or so. And even then, it's probably not my prime destination for where I want to kick the bucket. Sasuke spoke. Naruto felt that there was a lot to unpack there. Why did Sasuke loathe that Jin so much? It didn't matter right now, what mattered was meeting with the Hokage and finding someone skilled in sealing techniques to help him block out Kurama again. Sasuke, someone who I see as a little sister told me a vision she had. Visions about our world. It was in chaos with death everywhere. We need to go back and do what's right. Naruto tried to plead to his empathy, but Sasuke still wasn't having it. You can go back and do what's right, I'm plenty satisfied to stay here and do as I want. Sasuke said, leaning back in his chair. Naruto paused for a moment. 
Sasuke truly was uninterested in events on Ajin, but the galaxy was leverage Naruto could use. The former GD sighed deeply before switching to their native tongue. Sasuke, the seal is failing, and more of the nine-tailed fox's chakra keep leaking out. It is throwing my connection with the force off balance, and there's no telling if the seal will last much longer. Sasuke wasn't the least bit pleased with that development. In short, if you want this galaxy to be saved, I need to go back. Naruto urged him as Sasuke's side. Once Naruto had left, the third saw no reason to keep his identity as a Jinchuriki secret. Sasuke briefly wondered how Naruto knew he was aware of that fact, but then remembered the blonde had magic GD powers and could read his surface thoughts. Which meant that Naruto also knew that Sasuke thought that releasing the fox on the galaxy would probably, no, definitely, cause a tremendous amount of destruction. There would be little hope that the galaxy could stop the full power of the Nine Tails, and he definitely preferred his galaxy to be intact. Sasuke saw Naruto's smirk and couldn't help but release a groan he'd been building for the past day, with all the talk of Ajin and his former home. It was the last place he wanted to be. Fine, but I'm not setting foot on the surface for more than a day, and you're gonna have to pay me a lot. Sasuke stated as Naruto nodded. He'd grown accustomed to this song and dance by now. How much? Naruto questioned him, but Sasuke shook his head. No credits this time. I'm after something else. Sasuke smirked at Naruto's perplexed look. The blonde sighed and shrugged. Alright, what's the price, Mr. Bounty Hunter? Naruto asked sardonically. I just want you to teach me a few things, Master Jidi. Sasuke returned the sardonicism in full as Naruto raised an eyebrow. You know you're not force sensitive, right? Not enough to use his power, at least. Naruto questioned as Sasuke shook his head. I'm not interested in learning how to use your mystical powers, I have plenty of my own. I want you to train me in lightsaber combat, like you did with that clone in red. 100 hours of cumulative training. I'll be lenient and give you a 6 month time frame. Sasuke responded as Naruto got even more confused. You know without the force those forms would have to be watered down and I had to practice for hundreds of hours just to master one form. I don't really see your interest in only 4 days of training. Naruto pointed out the perceived flaw in his plan, but Sasuke rolled his eyes. I think you'd be surprised at just how capable I am. I'm strong enough to take you down if I wanted to, GD. I don't need your force when I have these. Sasuke said, pointing to his activated Sharingan. I've been meaning to ask you about those freaky eyes of yours man. What is that? Some kind of ninjutsu. Naruto asked, ignoring Sasuke's arrogance. No way this second-rate Jango Fat one up could take him down. It's the Sharingan, the Chiha clan's bloodlined jutsu. It allows me to read my opponent's movements like a book, the same way you can predict the future with the force. It also lets me learn specific movements and commit them to muscle memory instantly. So I know a lot of the cadences for several forms already, but I know nothing about the doctrine of each form. You don't have to so much teach me them, but rather teach me how to utilize them. Do that, and I'll take you straight to the Hokage myself. Sasuke responded as Naruto slowly nodded. You have yourself a deal, Ichiha. The blonde held out his hand. Sasuke outstretched his and took it into his own for a firmer than expected handshake. Pleasure doing business with you, Uzumaki. The bounty hunter responded with a smirk. Chancellor's office, Coruscant. It was a seldom occurrence where the anger of Sidious spilled over into the daily life of Palpatine. The Chancellor was absolutely livid, and many of his sycophants were tucking their tails between their legs and avoiding him as much as possible. Everything that had happened in the past day had thrown the Republic into more chaos than he had bargained for. Several systems that had held on to claims of neutrality were now openly pledging their loyalty to the Confederacy, having lost faith in a government that would unjustly rush a trial for a man that was, obvious to them, innocent. Even some loyal systems were now openly seceding, unconvinced that the Republic could protect them from the aggression of the Separatists. Sidious was the de facto leader of the Confederacy, but if too many systems sided with them, a Republic victory would start to seem less plausible, and the war would have to drag on even longer. Not to mention that Dooku was aging, if he were to die prematurely, Sidious's stranglehold of control on Gunray and the Council would slowly start to dissipate. The heart of the Republic under attack, and not by an army. By a bunch of bounty hunters. Sidious thought as he frowned. If a group of bounty hunters can do this, what damage would a Separatist armada do? Sidious had also been made aware of the small fleet from the 10th Army, that had dropped out of hyperspace, and fired upon the Coruscant home fleet, in an open effort to free Uzumaki. This splendor would be a good excuse to increase his influence over the navy, but it didn't change the fact that clones, conditioned from birth to be absolutely loyal to the Republic, had turned traitor for a single axe GD. This event had once again brought up the issue known as the clone question. The Senate was starting to question the loyalty of the clones and the Grand Army of the Republic. They had started to question whether the army and the clones were loyal to the Republic or to their generals. Those that were against the use of clones again up in arms. Some GD master named Koda had been using his own personal militia in protest against the use of clones. The man must have felt so vindicated once he'd heard the news. It would make additional orders of clones a much more difficult political task in the future. 
Sidious calmed himself and reclaimed his composure once again. No doubt he would see on these events again later, but there were orders of business to attend to. Pressing a secret button hidden underneath his desk, the room dimmed and the windows turned opaque. After a few moments, a hologram appeared in the form of one Count Dooku. What is thy bidding, my master? Dooku started as he kneeled, but Sidious was not in the mood for pleasantries. Or Tyrannus, I am sure you were made aware of Uzumaki's escape. Sidious questioned him as Dooku nodded. I am fairly certain that everyone in the galaxy is. The Separatist Council sees this as an opportunity and wants to renew many of our operations. Dooku reported as Sidious gritted his teeth. With the chaos at home, Separatist invasions would add fuel to the fire. If things got too bad there might be calls for his immediate resignation, and that could not be allowed to happen. The question of the guard loyalty was in order and more so of the 10th. The entire Republic was now uncertain if they could trust their own military anymore. This cannot come to pass. Prevent what invasions you can by convincing them of their foolishness, and inform me of those you cannot. In the meantime, I want you to hunt down Uzumaki by any means necessary. I don't care to hear of the cost. Bounty hunters, that assassin of yours, whatever you deem necessary. Palpatine ordered as Dooku bowed his head. It will be done, my lord. Dooku stated, though the Separatist leader didn't believe that he or anyone he knew could best Uzumaki other than his master at this point. Grievous had managed to match Uzumaki thanks to his cybernetic body, but that advantage would not last forever. The boy had grown too powerful, and this trend would continue. Of course, Dooku would never reveal his feelings on the matter to his master. The hologram shut off as Sidious sat in the dimmed room, his sinister Sith eyes ever more pronounced as he thought over everything had transpired. In another life and another time, perhaps there would be no Uzumaki to stand in his path, and everything would have gone according to his plans, but there was an Uzumaki, and he had derailed everything he had thrown at him, almost to the point of revealing him as a Sith. No more. Sidious thought. No more obstacles will be created by this war. If he proves a nuisance yet again, I will deal with him myself. Sidious threatened the blonde in his mind. He would show Uzumaki the true power of the dark side personally. If only he could sway Skywalker over to his side, now he would prove to be a powerful enough Sith to stomp out the flame that is Uzumaki. Agent system, one week later. The Lone Star Destroyer dropped out of hyperspace. This was Naruto's flagship, the Fire Shadow, named after a rough translation of his dream position of Okage. He had it modified to suit his needs throughout the war, but other than downsizing the heavy turbo lasers and adding additional point defense systems, it wasn't much different from a standard V-Nator. Within its enlarged ventral hangar, things had begun to move quickly. What do you think the general's homeworld looks like? Storm questioned as he checked his weapon. He along with others were selected to head on down with Naruto. I don't know, but from what he did talk about it, we better be ready. Who knows what kind of superpowered assassins are waiting for us down there. Fang responded as he checked his cloaking device. For a very long time his company had been testing the cloaking armor meant for clones specializing in assassinations. It was a good thing they still had them in working order. He expected it to come in handy given what they were supposed to face down there. Are you two ready? The two jumped as they turned to face Stoic looking at them with his blank face. Stoic, for the last time stop doing that. Storm shouted as Stoic raised an eyebrow. Doing what? He questioned him as Storm gritted his teeth. That. He shouted, pointing at Stoic, who only shrugged and turned to leave. Everything's all set. All members of the expedition are to head to Bay 14. Stoic told them as the two quickly followed after him, not wanting to be left behind. The trip to the hangar was short and true enough the rest were waiting for them. The team consisted of the usual suspects, King, Fang, Flash, Stoic, Blitz, and Storm, who insisted on coming along this time despite his injuries. These six were considered the greatest combatants in the 10th army. You sure you don't need me to come along? Ichiha seems to think you're underestimating the number of hostiles. Fox was walking alongside Naruto and Ross. As much as I'd love to have you right there alongside me, you're more than just a general now. You're part of my high command, and I need you up here more than I do on the front lines. Don't get me wrong, Ross is smart, and Wiz and Toad are great strategists, but they don't know the troops like you or I do. They're going to need your help planning the battle on Ryleth. And if things don't work out as planned and I'm stuck here longer than expected, they'll need a general who can lead the whole army besides me. Don't go saying that. I can't lead this whole thing by myself. You're the one that inspires everyone. Fox said, somewhere between fearful and embarrassed. He was definitely not ready to command an entire invasion op without Naruto to guide him. Well then you know what you need to get better at in order to improve. The blonde general countered. I guess so. Good luck down there, general. Fox wished Naruto well as the engines of Slave I began to start up. Will do. Oh, and until I return, Fox, the fire's shadow is yours. Naruto bequeathed command of his flagship to who would have to be his most trusted general. I'll take good care of it. Fox promised with a smile. You better, or it's your ass when I return. Naruto got one last word in before the boarding ramp retracted fully and the door sealed. Alright, let's get on with it already. I want to get off his rock as soon as possible. I'm not looking forward to being Sasuke stated. 
This was the last place he wanted to be. Too many bad memories, but a deal was a deal. Naruto sighed as Slave I launched from the ventral hangar. Take us down Sasuke. Naruto stated as Sasuke waved his hand as Slave I careened towards Ajin's surface, which wasn't far considering that the ship was already in orbit. Naruto turned to look back as the fire shadow finished its maneuver and jumped back into hyperspace towards Ralph. Slave I broke through the atmosphere as a sea of trees became visible. Force. Well, this should be fun. Storm commented as he tapped his blaster. This was environmental training 101. Forest biomass were easy pickings for elite clones like them. Should be over there. Slow down Sasuke, or we're gonna miss it. Naruto pointed as slave I completely skimmed over the treetops towards what Naruto had presumed was Sasuke's destination. But the onyx-haired bounty hunter didn't slow down, and Naruto realized why when the village came into view. Or rather, the ruins of what was once the leaf village known as Kanoha came into view. The blonde's eyes slowly widened as he saw the destruction before him. Buildings had been utterly destroyed with entire neighborhoods in ruins and craters littering what was once the bustling streets. The stone heads of the third and fourth Okage had both been completely destroyed with an almost malicious intent. Before he could get a good look, Sasuke had sped overhead to the north, heading deep into the forests of the land of fire. Sasuke, what happened? Naruto questioned him, but Sasuke didn't respond. Perhaps it was simply because he didn't want to. Nonetheless, the curiosity was firmly implanted in Naruto's mind. Who would do such a thing to the village, and how did it happen? There was no way they were attacked by an enemy nation, the daimyo would have ordered their surrender long before any hostile forces reached Kanoha proper, so there couldn't have been a war between villages that happened in his absence unless Kanoha was taken by surprise. We're approaching the LZ. Sasuke announced as the ship flew over a clearing in the forest to a large terrace mountain, the forest slowly started to land near the building at its peak. And where exactly are we? Fox questioned him. The Tsuchiha family stronghold. Every member of the clan knows of this place as our ancestral home. And this was where I found the ship that took me off planet. Sasuke started as he approached the building he reached for a device that he had put together from scraps in the cargo hold of the fire shadow. Sending a very old fashioned radio wave transmission, a portion of the rocky terrace began to slide open, revealing that the structure was significantly larger than one would expect. Suddenly, Sasuke peeked up at something Naruto didn't see. Darn, I let it slip. Guess I'm not getting that 2000. That was a dirty trick, Uzumaki. Sasuke said as he situated his helmet back onto his head. He was joking if only to forget everything he remembered. Remembered as if it had happened yesterday. The ship pulled into the side of the mountain and jerked as the ramp touched ground, and the door slowly slid open, letting everyone file out. They descended the mountain and arrived at the forest floor quicker than Naruto had expected of Sasuke, who had been dragging his feet for the past week. He guessed that the Ichiha wanted to get off of Ajin as soon as possible. Thermal visors up, everyone. King ordered as the clones tapped a button on their visors in unison to better see through the thick forest. While the clones were having a simply enough time seeing around them, Naruto felt a wave of energy overwhelm him. His four senses already wonky due to the overflow of Karama's chakra, but this was something he'd never come close to feeling before. It was like he was drowning in a sea of midi chlorians. It feels as if this forest is alive. Naruto said to himself as he could feel everything. Usually he would feel this sensation only when he used his battle mediation, but everything around him seemed to be teeming with the force. It was said that the first Hokage used his own Kekei Genkai to create this forest. Maybe he was a GD, who knows. Sasuke joked. Naruto knew that was unlikely, but the clones were staring at the armored Uchiha, as if he were insane. They tell us that some guy created this force. From nothing. Fang questioned him as Sasuke hesitantly shrugged. Well, not from nothing, but that's pretty much the idea. Sasuke skipped the intricate details. I would believe that considering the fourth managed to defeat a whole army on his own at Kanabi Bridge. Naruto added, remembering the stories of his favorite Hokage. The man who he still looked up to today. We should get moving. The sooner we find the Shinobi Alliance hideout the better. Sasuke stated as Naruto looked at him, confused. Shinobi Alliance. What's that? Naruto questioned once more as Sasuke frowned. Naruto was gonna find out sooner or later, so he might as well tell him now. The Shinobi Alliance is an alliance between Kumo, Kanoha, and the Suna Resistance. Formed to take down Orochimaru and the Akatsuki organization. Sasuke, when Kanoha and Kumo made your rivals constantly at each other's throats. I wasn't around very long, and even I remember that there was bad blood between the two. And Suna Resistance. What happened to the village? I know they were the weakest next to Kiri, but... Naruto had so many questions. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.